Let's say we have a situation where there's an experiment on skin cream. Medical researchers have developed a new cream for treating skin rashes. New treatments often work, but sometimes make rashes worse. Even when treatments don't work, skin rashes sometimes get better and sometimes get worse on their own. As a result, it's necessary to test any new treatment in an experiment to see whether it makes the skin condition of those who use it better or worse than if they had not used it. Researchers have conducted an experiment on patients with skin rashes. In the experiment, one group of patients used the new skin cream for two weeks, and a second group did not use the new skin cream. In each group, the number of people whose skin got better and the number whose condition got worse are recorded in the table below, actually to the right. Because patients do not always complete studies, the total number of patients in each of the two groups is not exactly the same, but this does not prevent assessment of the results because we're using percentages. Please indicate whether the experiments show that using the new cream is likely to make the skin condition better or worse. So since using new, the, the skin cream is the explanatory variable and the rash is the response variable, I want to know the percentage of the response variable that is in each, um, that is in getting worse or getting better using the, each cream. So I'm going to compare within each cream here. So I'm saying 223 out of the total 298 who used the new skin cream got worse rash and um, 25.2% got better. Well, when you look at that, that doesn't seem terribly good, but then when you compare it to the people who did not use the skin, new skin cream, 83.6% got worse and 16.4% got better. Um, so it appears that using the new skin cream did increase the probability that you, your rash would get better. Not by a whole lot, but by some. So there was some evidence that the skin cream was effective since there was a higher percentage of people who got better using it than not using it. However, this isn't the whole story with this experiment. This experiment was actually a fake. This, was, this experiment was actually part of a larger experiment where people were randomly, volunteers were randomly given one of four scenarios. They were given either the, um, the same, they were given the, the one that we just talked about, or they were given the same scenario but with the results switched around. So this says the rash got better and this got, says the rash got worse, same numbers. So in this case you would interpret the fact, you would say it looks like using the new skin cream made things worse instead of better um, because the percentages now that were that 75 percent got better with the new cream but 83 got better with the old or the not using the new cream so not using the new cream seems to be more beneficial in the second experiment. Two, and then another uh, two groups got something completely different. They got the same numbers, the same table, one of the two options, but this was now used uh, with a totally different scenario. They were set, so data was collected from 426 cities about whether or not they have um, a law banning private citizens from carrying concealed handguns in public and how that affected the increase in crime or the, or the decrease in crime. So cities that ban concealed handguns, cities that do not ban concealed hand, handguns, increase or decrease in crime. So if we look at these percentages here, if you got C, you would interpret to, that to say that um, cities that ban concealed handguns showed an, an overall, a, a higher decrease in crime than cities that did not ban handguns concealed handguns. In, in table D then you would say um, cities that ban concealed handguns tended to show a greater increase in crime than cities that did not ban concealed handguns. So the first part of, the, so this was, so why did people get these four things here? Here's the actual experiment that was done. Everybody knows that our political views can sometimes get in the way of thinking clearly, but perhaps we don't realize how bad the problem actually is. According to a new psychology paper, our political passions can even undermine our very basic reasoning skills. More specifically, the study finds that people who are otherwise very good at math might totally flunk a problem they would otherwise probably be able to solve simply because giving the right answer goes against their political beliefs. The study by Yale Law Professor Dan Cahan and his colleagues has an ingenious design. At the outset, 1,111 study participants were asked about their political views and also a series of questions designed to gauge their numeracy, that is, their mathematical reasoning ability. Participants were then randomly given one of the four data tables below and asked one of the questions you answered on the previous page. 
So notice here, this one, the correct answer would be rash decreases for people who use the didn't, who use the new skin cream. Rash increases for people who use the new skin cream. Crime decreases or crime increases uh, for cities that ban carrying uh, concealed weapons in public. So how did the results come out? First of all, this was no easy problem for most people to solve. Across all conditions of the study, 59% of the respondents got the answer wrong. So here's the first scenario about the rash and the, the CD. So here is their numeracy score. Remember, they were evaluated on their numeracy first. Their numeracy score is here. And then they're evaluated on their correct interpretation of the data. So incorrect interpretation of those data would be a 0. Correct interpretation is a 1. So not surprisingly, Cahan study found that the more numerate you are, the more likely you are to get the answer to the skin cream problem right. Moreover, it found no substantial difference between highly numerate Democrats and highly numerate Republicans in this regard. The better members of both political the better members of both political groups were at math, the better they were at solving the skin cream problem. So some people got it right, some people got it wrong, but generally people with higher numeracy scores got the problem right. So the um, solid line represents, let's see. The liberal Democrat saying that the rash increases, the liberal Democrat saying the rash in decreases, increases. So basically all four of them, we saw that the correct answer um, was more likely to occur, being closer to one here, if their num numeracy was high. But look what happened when they were asked the gun control problem. However, on the gun control, handgun version of the problem, strong political patterns emerged in the results, especially among people who are good at mathematical reasoning. Most strikingly, highly numerate liberal Democrats did almost perfectly when the right answer was that concealed handgun, concealed weapons ban does indeed work to decrease crime, an outcome that favors their pro-gun control predilections. So if, if their answer was something that agreed, if the correct answer agreed with their political beliefs, they got the correct answer. But they did much worse when the correct answer was that the crime increases in cities that enact the ban. So when the correct answer was that, um, when the correct answer to the, the actual contingency table problem was against their political briefs, beliefs, they got the answer wrong. They second guessed, they changed their answer to fit their political beliefs. Same thing with Republicans. The public, Republicans did really well when it says that crime increases when we ban handguns carried in pub, uh, concealed handguns, but when they said crime decreases, they got the answer really wrong. And interestingly enough, they were it was most pronounced with the most highly numerate uh, members of both parties. They were the ones most likely to, to change their answer to match their political brief, beliefs, even though they knew how to do the problem correctly. So what's happening when highly numerate liberals and cons conservatives actually get it wrong? Either they're intuiting an incorrect answer that is politically convenient and feels right to them, leading them to inquire no further. And else they don't even do the math, they just figure out what they think the answer should be and say it. Or else they're stopping to calculate the correct answer, then refusing to accept it and coming up with some elaborate reason why 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 2 in this particular instance. Cahan suspects it's mostly the former rather than the latter. The Scottish Enlightenment philosopher David Hume famously described reason as a slave of the passions. Today's political scientists and political psychologists like Cahan are now affirming Hume's statement with reams of new data. This new study is just one of many in this respect, but it provides perhaps the most striking demonstration yet of just how motivated and just how biased reasoning can be, especially about politics. Um, and I found this really interesting and kind of disturbing as well because it's saying that you can't really convince someone, even with facts, you, even facts and, and logic reasoning and data is not going to convince someone against their already predetermined opinion. And so I think that's one of the problems that we have with our political system now is that people are so set in their ways, they're not even going to listen if someone shows them evidence that they are wrong. Um, kind of scary. Here's the, the link to the article if you're interested, um, the whole article. I, I excerpted the main part of it, but um, 
very interesting study that was done, very interesting experiment.